As soon as I walked into a nightclub, I just knew there's something about nightlife and being in a club that was so inspiring to me. Like everybody sort of creates their own little character, and it was just I'd never walked into something that I knew 100. I I could under, understand and navigate through. I just walked in and was like, I knew the club would in some way influence the rest of my life. How was it performing at the Commodore? It was such a huge honor because first of all, it's the Commodore. So anybody that I respect in music has already played there. It was the first time I sort of was backstage about to go on, and I was like, wow, this is all actually happening. It felt so real. Like there were so many people. I don't know. It was definitely one of those full circle moments where you feel like, fuck, all my hard work is paying off, and it did. Who is Maxwell Maxwell? Maxwell Maxwell is my music man. Well, Maxwell saw me in some club, like running around screaming and yelling, and he said he's really cool. And Betty Ford said, yeah, he's starting to do music. And he's like, oh my god, we should do a track together because he was interested in producing. And um, he called me, and I said, yeah, I was down, and we went to the studio and wrote "Fuck Talk." Love you, Max. Rami Mikhail, another really talented person that I'm very, very lucky to work with. He um, did the first video with me, Fuck Talk, and we started talking about the second one and definitely wanted to get more conceptual with it. And it basically talked about the idea of what extreme, the extremes that people will go to get love. So I, I, I thought of this idea about how if I was like this guy who never talked to people, I didn't talk to anybody, I didn't take phone calls, I didn't have sex, I just sat in my lair and I got people to come to me and then I would send them out, they would go seduce people, fuck them, steal their hearts, their actual hearts, and bring them back to me. So then I became this heart collector, and I have like this pile of bloody hearts to symbolize like the love of the people that I'm going to get. First time I ever read a bad comment about myself, I was on the cover of X to West, and I was so excited because I thought that you actually had to become a really huge star, not that I'm not, but you would have to get world recognition before people started attacking you but literally as soon as i got a little bit of success the hate started coming and the first time i read it i think they said i was like lady gaga's jealous and untalented brother and i cried and i called my best friend i was like i don't know why they're saying this to me and it took a long time for me to understand that they're not they're not attacking me as a person because they don't know me they're just hating on what I'm doing and it's fine. I mean, I'm putting myself out there. If people want to hate on me, they can because they want to call me a fag or they want to call me brilliant. It's all the same thing in my books. Because I'm not trying to stand out. I'm not trying to do anything except for what's truly inside of me. So whatever you see, whatever you hear, anything that I'm giving the audience, the fans, the club, anything, it's coming from a really genuine place. They like watching people they can relate to and I think people can relate to me in some weird, bizarre, glitter, club fueled way. There's something about me that they like, so just gotta keep going. Keep going, Peter. Yeah.